today we are going to look at solving double angle trig equations. The national five essential skills are solving linear trig equations and factorising. Sometimes we need to solve trig equations which have a double angle but also another trig term. For example, sine 2x plus cos x equals 0, cos 2x minus cos x equals 0, and cos 2x plus 4 sine x minus 1 equals 0. Here you can see we have a double angle 2x but also a single angle of x. To help us solve these types of trig equations, we use the double angle formulae. This is given to you in the exam. So here we see that sine 2a just has one expansion, which is 2 sine a cos a. However, cos 2a has three expansions. We will focus on the bottom two. Example 1. Solve sine 2x equals cos x for x lying between 0 and 360 degrees. So the first thing we need to do is get both trig terms over to the same side. So we can write that as sine 2x minus cos x equals 0. And because we have a double angle and a single angle, we'll go to our double angle formulae. So the sine 2x will replace with 2 sine x cos x from our double angle formulae. I'll do that in our next line, which gives us 2 sine x cos x minus cos x equals 0. Now from here, we have to factorise in order to be able to solve this. So just like before, um, you first of all check for a common factor. So here we've got a common factor of cos x, which I'll take out. And we're left with 2 sine x minus 1 equals 0. And just like previous videos, we will solve these separately. So we'll equate cos x first of all to 0. And you may need to draw your cosine graph to find out when it's equal to 0. And here we can see it's equal to 0 in two places, which is 90 degrees and 270 degrees. We will then make 2 sine x minus 1 equal to 0, which rearranges to give sine x equal to a half. This is looking for an angle on the first two quadrants and it is an exact value. So here we have sine x equals a half, that'll be 30 degrees that we're working with. So the angle in the first quadrant there will be 30 degrees and the angle in the second quadrant will be 180 minus 30, which is 150 degrees. Therefore, our final solution is x equals 30 degrees, 90 degrees, 150 degrees and 270 degrees. Example 2. Solve cos 2x minus 3 cos x plus 2 equal to 0 for x between 0 and 360 degrees. So here we can see we have a double and a single angle, indicating that we have to use our double angle formulae. Now for cos there are three options um, and we need to make sure we pick the correct one that's going to allow us to factorise. So having a little look, the middle term is a negative 3 cos x term. So we want to pick the option which only has cos in it. We want an expression with only cos terms. So having a look at our cos double angle, we're going to pick the middle option there which is 2 cos squared x minus 1. So in our equation, we're going to replace the cos 2x with 2 cos squared x minus 1. We'll then have our minus 3 cos x plus 2 equals 0. We can then combine our numerical terms together. So 2 take away 1 will leave us with a number 1 at the end. And now we've got a quadratic expression and we've seen in previous videos how to factorise a quadratic trig expression. So we've got 2 cos squared x minus 3 cos x plus 1 equal to 0. And this will factorise to give two brackets, 2 cos x minus 1 and cos x minus 1 equal to 0. Now we then split this in two and we need to solve each equation separately. So 2 cos x minus 1 equals 0 first of all, which rearranges to give cos x equal to a half. Again, we're going to use um, our cast diagram to help identify which quadrants we're looking for angles in. 
So because cos is positive, we're taking a first and fourth quadrant. Now a half is an exact value, so our exact value of triangle we'll draw out to help us get the angle x, which is 60 degrees. So remember your cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So 60 degrees is the angle in the first quadrant. To get the angle in the fourth quadrant, it's 360 minus 60, which would be 300. If we then have to solve our second trig equation, so cos x minus 1 equals 0, which rearranges to give cos x equal to 1. We can draw our cos graph to help us identify where it's equal to the number 1. So here we can see it's equal to number 1 in two places, at 0 degrees and 360 degrees. However, 360 degrees is out with our range because we are only to list all angles less than 360. So our final solution is x equals 0 degrees, 60 degrees and 300 degrees. Example 3. Solve 3 cos 2x minus 4 sin x minus 1 equal to 0 for x greater than or equal to 0 degrees but less than 360 degrees. So again, in this example, we have a double angle and a single angle, and we need to replace our cos 2x. So we're going to go to our double angle formula, and as we're going to have to factorise, we need to ensure <coughs> that we have the same trig term across the whole expression. So our middle term is negative 4 sin x, so that gives us a little clue in which um, cos rule to use. So we're going to use the bottom option there. Um, so cos 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sin squared x. Therefore, we'll then get an expression with all sin in it. Now, when we're doing this substitution and we're replacing our cos 2x, we need to be very careful as there is a number 3 at the front. So we will put our number 3 down first. And then we will put our 1 minus 2 sine squared x in a bracket. And we need to make sure we multiply everything in that bracket with the 3 outside. So we have 3 bracket 1 minus 2 sine squared x, minus 4 sine x, minus 1 equals 0. From there we can expand our bracket. So 3 times 1 will be 3. 3 multiplied by negative 2 sine squared x will be negative 6 sine squared x. Minus 4 sine x minus 1 equals 0. Again, we will combine our numerical terms together. So 3 take away our 1 will leave us with a plus 2 at the end. So we have a quadratic trig expression that we will be able to factorise in order to solve it and find the solutions for x. Now, first of all, I want to take out a common factor. So here we can see there's a common factor of 2. But I'll, I don't want to factorise a negative sine squared x, so I'm going to take out a common factor of negative 2, and that will leave me with 3 sine squared x plus 2 sine x minus 1, which then factorises to 3 sine x minus 1 and sine x plus 1 equal to 0. We'll now equate each bracket to 0 and solve. So 3 sine x minus 1 is equal to 0, which rearranges to give sine x equal to 1 third. Again, we're going to use our cast diagram. And sine is equal here to a positive value. So the sine graph is positive in the first and second quadrant. So we'll tick those. And a third is not an exact value. So using our calculator, inverse sine of a third will give us 19.5 degrees. So 19.5 degrees is the angle in our first quadrant. To get the angle in our second quadrant, it's 180 minus 19.5 degrees. So our solution there is 19.5 degrees and 160.5 degrees. Next, we're going to take our sine x plus 1 and equate it to 0, which will rearrange to give sine x equal to negative 1. And again, we can draw out our sine graph to help us with this. And we can see that the graph is at minus 1 at 270 degrees. So our final solution for x is 19.5 degrees, 160.5 degrees, and 270 degrees. 
Now try these examples for yourself. Please pause the video. And the solutions are x equals 0, 120, 180 or 240 degrees, x equals 0, 2pi over 3, 4pi over 3 or 2pi. So today we've learned how to solve trig equations with double angles. It is really important that we pick the appropriate double angle formulae that is given in the formula sheet in the exam. We need to then possibly factorise and solve two trig equations and we also need to double check all our angles lie within the range that is stated. Example 3. Solve 3 cos 2x minus 4 sin x minus 1 equal to 0 for x greater than or equal to 0 degrees but less than 360 degrees. So again, in this example, we have a double angle and a single angle, and we need to replace our cos 2x. So we're going to go to our double angle formula, and as we're going to have to factorise, we need to ensure that we have the same trig term across the whole expression. So our middle term is negative 4 sin x, so that gives us a little clue and which um, cos rule to use. So we're going to use the bottom option there. Um, so cos 2x is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Therefore, we'll then get an expression with all sine in it. Now, when we're doing this substitution and we're replacing our cos 2x, we need to be very careful as there is a number 3 at the front. So we will put our number 3 down first and then we will put our 1 minus 2 sine squared x in a bracket and we need to make sure we multiply everything in that bracket with the 3 outside. So we have 3 bracket 1 minus 2 sine squared x minus 4 sine x minus 1 equals 0. From there we can expand our bracket. So 3 times 1 will be 3. 3 multiplied by negative 2 sine squared x will be negative 6 sine squared x minus 4 sine x minus 1 equals 0. Again, we will combine our numerical terms together. So 3 take away our 1 will leave us with a plus 2 at the end. So we have a quadratic trig expression that we will be able to factorise in order to solve it and find the solutions for x. Now, first of all, I want to take out a common factor. So here we can see there's a common factor of 2, but I'll I don't want to factorise a negative sine squared x, so I'm going to take out a common factor of negative 2, and that will leave me with 3 sine squared x plus 2 sine x minus 1, which then factorises to 3 sine x minus 1 and sine x plus 1 equal to 0. We'll now equate each bracket to 0 and solve. So 3 sine x minus 1 is equal to 0, which rearranges to give sine x equal to 1 third. Again, we're going to use our cast diagram. And sine is equal here to a positive value. So the sine graph is positive in the first and second quadrant. So we'll tick those. And a third is not an exact value. So using our calculator, inverse sine of a third will give us 19.5 degrees. So 19.5 degrees is the angle in our first quadrant. To get the angle in our second quadrant, it's 180 minus 19.5 degrees. So our solution there is 19.5 degrees and 160.5 degrees. Next, we're going to take our sine x plus 1 and equate it to 0, which will rearrange to give sine x equal to negative 1. And again, we can draw out our sine graph to help us with this. And we can see that the graph is at minus 1 at 270 degrees. So our final solution for x is 19.5 degrees, 160.5 degrees and 270 degrees.